Well, I sit down, I turn my computer on, I open my word processing software, I look at the blank screen for a little bit. <laughs> I, I think I should, I should sit down and make a detailed outline, but usually I just start writing. I think it's important to get stuff down and not worry initially about how nice it looks or how organized it is. Just get your thoughts down. But I do think that it's, it's helpful sometimes to start by writing the title in the abstract. And of course, these are not final. I actually come back and change them many times. And the abstract obviously has to reflect the final version of the paper, not your initial random thoughts. But trying to, trying to condense what you want to say into a concise message, which is reflected in the title or the first couple of sentences of the abstract, then really helps you to frame what the paper is going to be about. Then you sit down and write about the results. You jump in the middle and, and talk about what you found and what it means. Well, I, I think when you're ready to write up a paper, um, the first thing you should think about is what are the most important conclusions we can draw? Um, and set up the paper and write from that standpoint. So I always say don't write an introduction that sets up the reader for disappointment. Uh, promise to solve a lot of problems that you're not going to solve in the paper. Um, that's usually a recipe for, for failure. Uh, but if you can write out the conclusions that you're going to draw um, and to be as aggressive as you can but stand behind the science, make sure that the science backs up what it is that you're, you're, you're stating, you know, how far you're pushing the field forward with that particular work, uh, then the paper kind of writes itself because you write the intro around setting up the problem that you're going to solve with those conclusions. You write the middle of it, uh, the data uh, you present uh, that creates a compelling argument for those particular conclusions, and then you wrap up with the conclusions. I would say start out with figuring out how you want to write. So my experience is people, there's two kinds of people. They have one which think very graphically, pictorially, um, very common in organic chemistry. And in those cases, I would say try the figure plan first. And then um, go from there, you know, you, this is what you want to show, this is what you're going to say about this, and this is how you build the story. Um, the other part, or the, the other kind of person is really more mm, word-oriented. And what I, what I teach people in the writing workshop is basically take little flashcards, put one item on there, uh, and then put them out on the table and say, okay, you know, first I'm going to talk about this, and then I'm going to talk about that, and then I'm going to talk about that. Maybe this here isn't quite so important, so that can go into the supporting information and goes out. My number one piece of advice is make yourself do it. All right, most people have a hard time with writing. It's, it's difficult. And uh, you just have to set aside time in a place where you're not going to be disturbed and you have to do it as painful as it is you know give yourself reasonable sized time things <laughs> where uh, where you're going to work on it and then give yourself a break <laughs> and come back to it all right I would say that most early career researchers have spent a decade or more learning to do research, and yet at the same time they feel that writing should be some natural uh, event that doesn't take practice. Writing uh, is just like research. The more you work at it, the better you'll be. And so work to make it better. That means work to make it faster, easier, and less stressful, and get feedback and try to work on that feedback so that you become more proficient uh, at writing effectively.